Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, actually a Photography 101 episode, and we're going to talk about a little-used button, at least for most of us, called the Depth of Field button, which is usually located on the kind of front of the camera on this Nikon D7200. It's like right here. It might also be called a preview button. And you see it on mid to higher range cameras, not only DSLRs, but also translucent mirror cameras and even some mirrorless cameras. So what is it and why would you want to use it or why would you not want to use it? Well, to understand that, you have to kind of go back to the whole concept of depth of field. So of course, depth of field means how much of the image from front to back is in focus. So if you have a very, very narrow depth of field, if you're taking a picture of me, maybe my nose is in focus, but my ears are out of focus. If you have a very large depth of field, not only would I be in focus, but the couch behind me would be in focus, and maybe even out that window would be in focus. So clearly there are reasons to have a shallow depth of field and a very large depth of field. You want to isolate the person from the background. You want a shallow depth of field. You want the whole background in the picture. You want a very large depth of field. Well, how does that relate to the depth of field button or the preview button? So we're going to pretend that this lens here is actually a prime lens. Let's say a 50 or 85 millimeter. It doesn't really make much difference, but it has a fixed aperture, or it has an aperture of an f2.8, so it's a pretty bright lens. So we're pretending this is a prime lens, and it has a a maximum aperture of f2.8. So when I look through the lens, no matter at what f-stop I set the camera, I'm going to see it at its widest possible aperture, so that when I see the image, it's going to be as clear and as bright as possible. But that doesn't give me all the information about the image because let's say I'm taking the picture at f2.8. Let's say I kind of crank it up to f22. They're going to have completely different depths of field because the 2.8 value is going to give me a much shallower depth of field than the f22 value. So I I can't really judge that by looking through the lens because it's always going to be at its widest aperture so I can see things clearly. But if I press the depth of field button, what happens is that that lens will stop down to what I'm actually setting it to and I'll get a much better idea of what's in focus and what's not in focus. What's the compromise with that? Well, naturally, as I stop down the lens, the image becomes much dimmer. So that's why you have that always staying at the wide open aperture until you use the depth of field button or until you press the shutter completely, at which point you're not going to see anything because the mirror flips up and the aperture clamps down and only the camera sees that. So is this a useful function? Well, I was looking at a CNET description of the depth of field, and they called it invaluable. But then the examples they gave didn't sound too invaluable to me. If you want to read the article, you can do that and see if you have a different opinion than mine. In my personal opinion, it's sort of an appendix. In other words, maybe it has some function. We don't really know. But most people can get by without it. Why is that? Well, in the old days, when you took a picture, you really wanted to know what the depth of field was because that was on film when the film would have to be processed. And, you know, you you wanted to make sure that as much pre-work was done as possible. But in a more modern camera, you get instant feedback on your LCD screen. And you can focus in and out, zoom in and out, see what's in focus, see what's not in focus, and really in a couple seconds, make an adjustment and take it again. Now, one of the examples that CNET did list was they said, well, if you have that once-in-a-lifetime photo or a photo that you can only take one time, I don't know, that, that wouldn't be a big issue. I would just use the 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 most reasonable f-stop and shoot at that. So in my opinion, the uh, depth of field button might be useful for some people, probably unnecessary for most, but it's there if you want it. And if you have a different opinion, please write it down in the comments below here. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my uh, video channel, that would be awesome. And have a great day.